Hi guys. Thanks for joining me for Craft With Me Fridays. I'm so excited you guys are all in here already. That's awesome. You guys are ready to, to make it, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So today we're going to start the neutral journal. I have Carol and Toby and Robin J and Becca and Judy and Deborah. Awesome. And Leah. Hello. Hello. You guys are all ready to go. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to start the neutral journal. Some of you guys, most of you guys, if not all of you guys have the neutral journal kit. Um, I did ship them right after they were paid. I think everyone except for one person um, has theirs. The person that doesn't have theirs just purchased it um, a few days ago. And so it has been shipped, but they don't have it yet. Um, so these videos that we're doing will stay up on the channel permanently. So if you're not able to make, um, if you're not able to watch the video when it's live, totally fine. The video will be up on the channel for forever, probably. And if you want to just watch the craft with me and then make it on your own time, you can do that also. And then if you need to go back to the video for something, um, then those videos will be there for you just so you guys don't have to stress if you can't make it to every Friday because we're going to start it today, but we're going to just keep working in it um, both on our own time and also in the craft with me lives on Fridays until it is finished. I'm estimating it will take us about four Fridays to finish it. It may take longer. It may be shorter. I'm assuming it's probably not going to be shorter, but because <laughs> four craft with me's is only like 12 hours. So while I am going to be doing some things off camera just so that we're not here forever making one journal, <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to take more than 12 hours probably. Awesome, Becca. Glad you like it. Got it yesterday. Awesome. I heard a lot of people got it yesterday. It was making me scared because priority mail used to take two to three days, but now it says it takes five. So yeah, <laughs> um, they just keep raising the rates and um, making it slower. I know they do the best they can, but yeah, priority mail going to five days is a big change for me because, you know, I ship a lot of things priority mail. So something to be aware of. It now takes five days. Awesome. Hi. Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> Hello, Cheryl. Awesome. Yeah, I think I shipped all of you guys on the same day and then a lot of you said you got it today. So it didn't really even realize. Uh, it didn't even really matter where you were in the country. They still all got there on the same day. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to be like super negative. I'm just going to say like, um, I really enjoyed the speedy service of Priority Mail. And now that it's five days, that's basically because so first class used to take like two or three days, usually like first class. And then um, priority mail would also take two to three days. And so sometimes you could ship it, you know, the, the less expensive way of um, what is now ground advantage. It used to be first class and still get there at the same time that a priority mail package would get there. But now ground advantage is taking like seven to 10 days and priority mail is taking five. So there is not a fast service anymore except for overnight and overnight with USPS is never really overnight. It's like two day service. So it's just, you know, things are taking a lot longer than they used to take. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all of that any more than I already did. <laughs> We're going to make the neutral journal today. We're going to work on the cover. So I will sh break open the kit and show you guys everything um, in the kit and we will start making the cover. We should be able to finish up the cover today as well as prepare the signature and quite possibly sew in the signature. I don't know if I have those things in here to sew that, and I hope I do. <laughs> so um, I had all of the stuff in here to make journals. Um, not everything because this isn't my craft room. You guys know this. This is my live sale room and not my craft room. My craft room is across the hallway. But I had a lot of things in here. And then we were making Christmas stuff for the longest time, right? And then I packed away all of the Christmas crafting things. I do this every year. Pack away everything Christmas out of my craft room and everything Christmas that was brought into here. But when I did that, I also put some things away in my craft room. And so now I'm just hoping that the stuff to sew in a signature is in here. 
If it's not, then, you know, I'll run across the hall. Not a big deal. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Teresa. Glad you guys could all join me tonight. So, hi, Wendy. Who is going to be making the cover with me tonight? I don't have the correct thread. Sewing in signatures. You can sew in signatures with anything that you want to sew them in with, um, except for like, okay, you can technically sew them in with sewing thread. However, if you're using sewing thread, you're going to need to probably eight ply that and sew it in that way because one you want your signatures to be sturdy and to stay in there while technically you can sew them with one single sewing thread and it will stay it probably won't stay for very long so you're going to want to make it as thick as you can make it and still get the thread through the eye of the needle that you're using and sew that in if you want if you have something thicker like i mean you could use ribbon you could use baker's twine you could use any type of string um, embroidery floss any type of string that you can get through the eye of a needle to sew it in and if you don't have a needle you can use a hole punch like a small hole punch if you have one of those or something to poke a hole in and you can hand sew it without a needle if your thread is you know sturdy enough where you can get it through the holes and do it that way so i didn't include a needle and thread because i figured a shipping you guys a needle you're not really supposed to like send needles i mean you can but they have to be well protected so that they don't just like poke the mailman right nobody wants to get poked by a needle you can imagine how that can kind of be a, <laughs> a thing right so i didn't ship the needles for that reason and also i figured most of you guys make journals um, a lot of you do anyway and so i figured you would have those supplies um, also, if you don't have the waxed linen thread or um, a good needle to sew in signatures, I can put a link up for a kit on Amazon. It's very inexpensive um, and it includes like a bone folder and it includes the waxed linen thread and it includes needles to sew in your signatures with. When I bought last Christmas, but the Christmas before that, the kit was like six or seven dollars. So beeswax does make your thread thicker um, probably still won't work with one single sewing thread but you, it's better than nothing right <laughs> it's better than nothing and worst case scenario um, you, you don't have to sew your signature in right away you can keep your signature um, you can you can assemble it fold your pages and start working in your signature and then sew it in at the end also. A lot of makers prefer to sew in their signatures at the very end after they've worked on all their pages and everything. That way, if they want to take one page out and do like mixed media or painting or something on it that they don't want the whole signature together, that's a good option. If you need to take one page to the sewing machine and do some sewing on it, once you sew in your signature, you have to deal with it being bound in the book. So. I sew mine in typically, I'm about half and half, honestly. I used to never sew them in until the end. Then I started doing it just because more than anything, it gives me that satisfaction of I've made a journal, right? <laughs> as soon as you sew in your signature, it feels complete. It looks like a journal, right? So I like that part of it. But honestly, I'm about half and half. It depends on what I'm gonna be doing. If I'm gonna be doing a lot of sewing on the pages or if I need to get in there with like gesso and paints, then I'm not sewing in those signatures until the end. If I feel like I can just sew the signatures in, put my pockets and ephemera in, do some little embellishing, then I'll go ahead and sew in that signature first. So it just, you guys have to figure out what you like to do with it. <laughs> Hello, Sheila. Uh, yes, um, uh, if you have crochet thread the actual not not like yarn but crochet thread if you had yarn yard would work in a pinch um you could use sari silk if you get a big enough hole and um poke your sari silk through you can make journals without making any holes or without using a needle just by um i can show you when i have the camera down too but just by tying sari silk around the signature folded into the cover so you don't have to have a needle, you don't have to have thread. I can talk about that more when I actually have the journal to show you guys too. 
You almost missed the start. I'm just chit chatting. <laughs> yeah. So Becca, I'll show you how to tie the sari silk just around the pages in the cover and you can leave it like that permanently. And that can be like, it's, it's called like ribbon bound journals or something like that. Right. So you don't have to poke holes and sew it in with thread. You can do sari silk. And I'll show you that when I have the cover down here made, um, it'd probably be easier, but you can also do that temporarily. If it holds in your journal, it holds your pages in. And then if you want to go back at the end and sew them in with a needle and thread, you can do that. All kinds of things. Not in your craft room either. Cool, Cheryl. I'm glad that you're with us tonight, Crafton. Yes, no stress tonight, right? Like this is just for fun. It's just, it's just for fun. And just because I'm making mine one way doesn't mean you guys have to make yours that way. Even if we all used only this kit, which is exactly the same supplies for every single person, and we all made exactly the way I'm showing, they're all going to look different anyway, because we all have our own way of doing things. We all have our own style. So um, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be like mine by any stretch of the imagination. And what I'm doing is certainly not the only way this can happen. <laughs> I'm sure there will be someone here at some point pointing out to me that you could do this or you could do that. <laughs> Just let me preface the whole video by saying my way is not the only way. <laughs> my way is just the way I'm doing it tonight. Awesome. Some me's, some people who are going to be doing it tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. Okay. I'm going to flip the camera down. Um, Vanessa is doing some family activities tonight. Um, so she will not be joining she will not be joining me um, here. She may join in chat at some point, but she is having a, a family thing tonight. So let me go ahead and flip the camera down. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so first things first, let's go through the kit. And let me explain to you kind of why I put whatever I put in there. Um, this is the kit that you guys received. I'm going to be using the seam kit. There's that sticky note that I lost. <laughs> put it on the TV and it keeps jumping back. Uh-oh. Just make sure that you're on live. Um, up there at the top, it should be red and it should say live. If you put your your um, mouse or finger or whatever you're using for a cursor on your TV across the bottom, there'll be a red line that appears and a little dot that says live. If you are not in live, just slide it all the way over to the right as far as it will go, and then you should be in live. Can't type. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. So the kit, first of all, don't throw this away. We're going to be using this for something. So save that. If you have already thrown it away, I'm sure you have some other plastic packaging in your craft room somewhere. It came with a little doily. We all got exactly the same supplies. So it came with a little doily. It came with an applique, another applique that looks like that guy. It came with a little bit of tickets. It came with some sort of cabinet card photo or the cabinet card photo holders, a French postcard, this little white frame, another picture, two little tiny pieces of super antique handwritten document, a French handwritten double-sided document, same thing with that guy, and then some onion skin and blank onion skin. And I put the blank in there so that we could stamp some things on it, or you can put it in your page or in your signature. You can do whatever you want to do with it, right? We might use it to like add a window to something. There's a piece of French ledger. The French ledgers all look different, but they're in there. And then this is German ledger, and it is from, um, this one is 1893. And I put this in here because of the handwriting, and this is what I'm using to cover my cover with. So I'm going to keep that one out. Then we have an assortment of rag paper book pages, 
Some of these are from the 1600s. So all of this is rag paper book page. Then a sheet of music, just in case you didn't have any. All of these general supplies will be used at the end, probably, or you know, as we make ephemera. That we might keep out. It depends on whether I'm going to put it in a signature. I guess we'll just put it over here to the side for right now. Some little baggies, glassine, white paper, and the waxed um, craft glassine, I guess. These pages here, there's an assortment of um, like a modern vellum, right? And then two sheets of neutral colored paper. We might put those in signatures. We might back tags with them or journal cards. There are several sheets of copy dyed paper. I think everybody got two or three of them, if I remember. There's three there. Then the kit itself is there. If I can pick it up. And then you got a sheet of regular white cardstock. We're not using the regular white cardstock. You can tell which one is the regular one because the regular one is quite thin and flexible. Then there is a piece of vintage onion skin paper. The onion skin paper does not have any numbers on it. There's no numbers on this one. This is the one we're using for our cover. So I'm going to set that to the side. And then we're using this 9 by 12 sheet of thick watercolor cardstock. This is the base to our cover, and it should be the final thing, the thing on the most bottom of your whole entire kit. Um, it's 9 by 12, whereas this sheet of cardstock is 8.5 by 11. So if you get confused of which one is which, you want the bigger of the two sheets for your cover. This is in there, and I just want to make sure that everybody grabs the right base so that their journal cover comes out to be the right size. And then I passed up that craft wax glossy and sack. We're going to need that for our cover also. So I'll go over what we need for a cover one more time and then we'll get going on it. Is it really blurry or just you? It looks fine on mine because I have it playing on another computer up there on the top. <laughs> it is very smooth. That paper that the kit is printed on is a Hammer Mill premium color copy paper. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Borderless Digitals. Yep. It's a game changer. Just figured out no live word on the TV. Yeah, a lot of people watching YouTube on the TV, you can't get the chat. So if you're watching on TV, you might watch on your TV so that you can see things bigger on the screen, but you might have it playing in chat on your phone or iPad or something like that. Lappy, I might have said lappy. I get live brain, whatever comes out of my mouth, I'm not responsible for. <laughs> Okay. Um, Tracy, first of all, thanks for joining us. If it's super, super blurry, you can try going out and coming back in. Sometimes that fixes it. So again, for the cover, I want the German, the large piece of German ledger. It's folded in half. It looks like that. I want the 9 by 12 super thick watercolor cardstock. The watercolor cardstock has like a bumpy side and it has a smooth side. And then I want the waxed craft glassine baggie. And I want the piece of vintage onion skin. And the vintage onion skin is not the French one. It's not the one with the little numbers on it. It's the other one. <laughs> it was it was on top of your watercolor cardstock. Okay, everybody with me? Yes, Robin, you can change the quality of your video. Um, some people's settings actually have it where you can choose to watch in 1080p, and that's what I'm streaming in. Awesome, Carol. Perfect. Okay. So let me show you where we're going with the cover, and then maybe it will make more sense. This is the cover that I made. I'll hold it down so you guys can see. This is the cover that I made. 
And it's basically the watercolor cardstock covered with the French, or not, sorry, not French, German ledger. And you notice that it has all these little ruffly torn little bits all over it, right? It's got it on the front, the back, it's visible on the inside. It's little roughly torn bits of paper, and I will show you how I did that. And then I've sewn around mine with messy stitching and a light color thread. You can do that if you want to. Um, if you want to just make the cover and then sew afterwards, you can do that. I will say that if you're going to sew around your cover, you want to do that before you sew in your signature. It's just much, much easier. You might be able to after you sew in your signature, depending on what your signature looks like but it is always easier to sew on your cover before you move to the signature part, right? So the messy stitching on mine just looks like that and it goes all the way around. So we're gonna make the whole cover minus the stitching because my sewing machine is not in here. Um, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to sew around it. I just did. <laughs> and this was the prototype oh one God. that I made. Please try again. Uh-oh, Siri's talking to me. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. And then this is what the inside looks like. I put some copy dyed paper in here just to give you an idea. Like the copy dyed paper is the size of our signature. So our cover is just slightly larger all the way around. And that's because we're using the nine by 12 watercolor cardstock. If you accidentally use the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper or sheet of cardstock, that's also in your kit. Your cover is going to be very flimsy. You may like that, you may like a thinner cover, but it's also gonna be the same size as your signature. So your pages are gonna stick out on all the sides. That's why I'm saying make sure you use the watercolor cardstock. Okay, that's where we're going with it. It's not groundbreaking like stuff. It's just a good journal base, right? And it's a single signature journal. So we're gonna make one signature and sew it into the center. You could, if you wanted to, make this with a spine and make you know a three signature five signature seven signature however many you wanted to go with it because this is the first kit we're doing together and i have a lot of people who have never made a journal before i figured we'd start with a single signature we can move on to multi-signatures in later months but <laughs> i figured this was a good jumping off point also a lot of the journals that i get requests for are single signatures maybe that's because of cost but a lot of people like to like they like to work in one journal, finish it, and then get a new journal, a new style, a new feel, etc. So most of the journals that I get requests for, most the, the most popular journal that sells anywhere, whether it's from me or anyone, is a single signature journal. Steaming velvets, <laughs> taking mental notes. That's awesome. <laughs> hello, Casey. I didn't say hello to you. Hello. Yes, it's going to be awesome. And we are going to be posting our journals, or at least the plan is everyone post their journals, their progress, you know, ephemera that you've made. If you've made something completely different and you want to post that and you're going to use that in your journal, um, we're going to post everything in Vanessa, Vanessa's um, Facebook group. It's called Junk Journal Junction. She will be in here or I will put a link in shortly for her Facebook group. And that way, if you're not a member, you can pop over there and post your pictures. You could also look at everyone else's pictures and projects that they've been posting to get ideas. And just because I'm making a neutral journal does not mean you have to make a neutral journal. I've given you neutral journal supplies in the kit, but you could easily add your favorite color to this kit. You could easily add in, you know, several colors if you want to make say you want to use this for valentine's day you can add in reds and pinks or purples or whatever you want to do with it if you don't want the super frilly girly and you want something more masculine or more industrial go for it <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do posting in junk journal junction that's right sheila yeah robin it looks good to me robin are you on live just making sure <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's get started with the cover. Using that watercolor cardstock, the first thing that we need to do is we need to score it. This one that I made, I did not run a score line down the center of it. And because it's that super thick watercolor cardstock, it was quite hard to fold. 
I'm gonna try to make that easier for all of us on the second one. So I wanna score it straight down the center. For that, pardon the noise, we're gonna use a scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, then my suggestion would be to maybe put it on the edge of a table and try to get a little bit of a crease started halfway down your paper and then fold it. You can try to fold it now and it will be much easier than after we glue this onto the cover. But when I had it all, so the first time I made it, I just glued everything on and then tried to fold and it gets pretty tight because it's very thick. So let's score it first. And this scoreboard does have a scoring tool in it. However, I like the Teflon one much better. So I'm gonna be using that. And so the, the cardstock, the watercolor cardstock is a nine by 12. So we're gonna score at six. So if you have a scoreboard, we're scoring at six. If you're using the edge of a counter or table or something like that, then you just want to measure and mark it and then score it. And because it's watercolor cardstock, it is very thick. And so my suggestion would be to go over it a couple of times using light pressure, just to get that crease in there nicely. And it's not gonna crease all the way through because it is so thick, but it's just to help it fold, right? So you can see that I've got a crease in there. This is the back side, and this is the side that I creased. And so if you're not really familiar with using a scoreboard, when you, when you take your scoring tool and you go down the line of the scoreboard, this part is your inside. Wherever you use your tool, that's your inside fold, and then the back side is your outside fold. And so you can see now it folds very easily, and it's got that perfect crisp fold line. So that's all we needed to do with the scoreboard. Again, don't have a scoreboard, totally fine. Just figure out a way to get a to get a crisp as, as crisp as you can line down it so that when we do fold it, it folds nice. Then next up for the German ledger, you want to pick which side that you want to use. For me, I didn't want to have this pink on anywhere online. So I didn't want the pink that runs here. I didn't want this and I didn't want the top only because I'm doing super neutral and I didn't even want that tiny speck of pink in mine. Becca, it doesn't matter. Either side up is good. Does not matter. I'm gonna get a sip of water. I'm talking too much. <laughs> okay. So if you don't care that yours has pink on it, then this next part isn't going to matter to you. But for me, it, it did. And I, again, I'm going to keep the pink off of it. So I want to find enough handwriting to cover the front panel and the back panel. And if you're using the pink part, yours is going to cover a lot more than mine is. But because I'm only going to use the center section, I'm going to need a front panel here and then a back panel from the second half of the page, right? So you just kind of need to look at your page and decide this one has a lot more writing here than the back side. It's a little more open here. So for me, I'm going to glue on this side and I'm going to leave this side face up. So now we need our cutter. And for the time being, we can move this watercolor cardstock out of the way. And we're just going to cut this German ledger now. And so first thing I'm going to do is trim the pink off. Again, you don't have to. If you, if you like the pink, you want to keep the pink, then, then by all means, keep the pink. Might help if I turn that the right way. So first thing I'm doing is just going in and trimming off the pink. And I'm trying to save as much of that ledger sheet as I can. And we can totally use this somewhere else. It's beautiful, right? I'm not throwing it away. I'm just saving it. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut mine, fold it up. 
it's not really going to matter if it's off a little bit. And just for the ease of fitting in this cutter, I'm going to do it. There we go. Same thing on this side. Just cutting off that little bit of pink. This little line right here. I don't like it. Going to cut it off. Okay. So because your page is double-sided, I have no pink on this side. But because the margin moves when, the, when it's the back side of the page, there is pink on this side. I'm not going to use either one of these on this side. So that pink isn't going to matter. I'm going to use these and there's no pink. All right. So then because my, my watercolor cardstock is nine by six, I need two nine by six panels, right? So I just want to measure nine inches and mark it. And then I'm going to cut it. Um, I'm going to just measure it nine inches this way. So this is my writing going the correct direction. I'm going to cut it nine inches down here. Does that make sense to everybody? Scoring tool at the dollar store. Perfect. Perfect, Judy. Yep. Casey's got it. Okay. So nine inches. I always forget how this little guy works. So this is the Tim Holtz one. And he has these little spin out things on the side of it. I've recently got this. And honestly, I haven't used these little things before. Ever. So nine inches. Nine inches is right there. Cool. And then I need six inches this way. So... Now I'm cutting it right down here to six inches. So I'm measuring this part six inches and cutting. And there we go. And if you're off by a little bit, if it's a little crooked, totally not going to matter. Okay. So here's the watercolor cardstock. And basically what I did is I cut my front panel. Okay. That's my front panel. Now we need a back panel. And if your paper, because you cut off the pink, is not the is not a big enough piece to cover this whole thing, don't worry because we're going to piece it in and then later we're going to embellish over that. It's not going to matter. So for right now, you've got a front panel that's whole if you've been cutting it like me, and if you cut all your pink off, you have this piece here. You just need to decide which side you want, and then we're going to cut this at six inches. And I pieced my very first one that I made also. I'm going to use this side. Am I? No, I'm going to use this side. And just because I like these numbers right here, I'm going to save that part. You save whatever part you like the best. So cutting at six. Now I've got enough to cover just right there and right here. And then we just need a little strip. And I don't like my little pieced sections to be on the upper half of it. I like my piece sections to be down here at the bottom. So when I piece it and glue it, I'm going to glue it here on the bottom. They are not. They're regular white thick ledger paper. So I have two little pieces left that I could decide, you know, which way I want them to be pieced on. So an example, you can totally leave everything perfectly straight where the writing is going, you know, left to right the same way we read and everything is straight. Or because we're piecing that back cover, you can have some writing going this way. You can have some writing going sideways. And if you wanted to, and I kind of think it looks good this way, is if you piece several pieces on there to kind of mix it up. Or you can piece the bottom part this way, and then you can put something down the spine to reinforce. You have many, many options here. For me, this time, I'm just going to cut a piece to piece in that section at the bottom. 
And later on, when we finish the cover, that part's going to get covered up and you're not going to care about it anyway. So that section is six inches. I just need a piece that is six inches long to cover. And so I'm going to save the writing and I'm going to cut it at six. And because there isn't much writing right down here at the bottom, I just want to trim that off. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm just being picky about it and trying to get as much handwriting on this section of paper as I can. So there is all of my pieces for the cover cut. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> okay. Everybody with me so far? Um, I don't know. It might just be the lighting, but it is a, you know, a thick piece of paper. Okie dokie. So now we're going to not glue these on yet. <laughs> Make sure you don't go ahead of me because we're not gluing those on unless you want to do your own thing and then totally do your own thing. So I'm setting all of my pieces to cover this off to the side. Then you have these. You have the onion skin and you have this. So for these, what I did to get all of this yummy, yummy goodness all the way around the edges is a little trick, right? Um, I didn't want to waste more material than possible. So this is what I came up with. Um, basically, you tear, you tear these into strips. And in order to tear this bag, you want to cut it open. So pull out some scissors, find one of the, the creases where the bag kind of gussets off to the side, put your blades of your scissors right in that crease and just cut it and cut it all the way down to the base of the bag. And then you want to do it the same way on the other side where you're opening up that gusset with scissors. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to crinkle this and mess it up anyway. So when your bag is open, you've got gusset here and gusset here and a flap. And then you just want to come in and you can rip it or tear it or whatever. But you want to take off that flap. So now you've got the whole flap piece off. And then you've got these two gussets and right here where the gusset is kind of glued in just open that gusset up all the way and then open that gusset up all the way by tearing it and now we have a flat piece here and then you notice at the very bottom of the bag there's the part where the glue is we're not going to care about that right at the moment but we are not going to use that for our cover so you could tear it off if you wanted to. It's not bothering anything by staying there. So honestly, I'm just going to leave the rest of that. <laughs> then what you want to do, let me see. The size of the sheet of the, for the front. So the front, I'm using the German ledger. Um, and it needs to cover the 9 by 12 cardstock. The 9 by 12 watercolor cardstock needs to be covered however you want to cover it with that German ledger. Now you say that, I'm not seeing it anymore. <laughs> the sizes of the sheets. Okay, okay. Yes, Teresa, nine by 12 squared in half. Okay, so then I want to tear this into strips. Um, it's kind of scored right here where the gusset is. You don't want these chairs to be perfect anyway. Um, so the fact that they're gonna come out just by hand tearing them slightly rough, that's perfect. So just tear down those fold lines where the gusset was. 
And same thing on this side. Tear down this gusset. And again, it just totally tore crooked. All the better. <laughs> right? And then tear down this one. All the better. I'm going to set this piece off to the side. It is the one that has the glued crease in the center and also at the bottom. And then we're going to tear this piece. Um, it doesn't really matter. You, you could tear that first one if you wanted to. I just avoided it because it had the glue pieces for now. And I folded that and I'm attempting to tear it, but you see it's crooked. That's going to be great. Fold it again. And basically you want to tear strips. And then fold it again and tear another strip. So basically you have a whole bunch of strips of that. Um, I don't know that we're going to need this piece, but maybe. So I'm just going to keep tearing it. If you want to see if you can save some of it for something else, then you might hold off on tearing some more until you know. I'm just going to tear off that glued section. That is probably more than plenty of these strips. So I'm going to stop tearing that one. I'm going to put that in my scrap pile. And now I'm going to tear this onion skin. This onion skin has a watermark right here. Maybe that's what Casey was seeing my hand through. But this is the onion skin paper. It's the one without the numbers on it. So then I just need to tear this into strips. And I'm going to fold it. And again, if it goes crooked, it goes crooked. <laughs> Watching and fussy cutting, eating and watching. <laughs> Go for it, Teresa. Okay. So you're going to tear this whole entire sheet. You might not need the whole thing, but it depends on how much of this frilly stuff that you want off to the side, right? Like the more um, strips you tear, the more fluffiness you can get. If you don't want any fluffiness, then you can skip this whole entire section. But if you want that fluffiness, it comes from these. And it's just a great way to get a super layered, um, rough torn look without actually having to layer all of those things as whole sheets. Because we're just going to cheat and use little strips all the way around and then glue our ledger onto it. So then we have the strips that we just tore of the onion skin. And then all I want to do with the onion skin is just crinkle it into a ball and crinkle it into a ball and crinkle it into a ball. <laughs> all of them, you can do them all together. You can have your grandkids help you, <laughs> whatever you want to do. And we're going to do the same with the brown. And the brown is a little harder to like crease up, right? Because it's just a little waxy. But yeah, just crinkle it. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. <laughs> oh, Teresa, I'm sorry. Wow, Teresa, that's a great deal. The whole sheet, Toby, is what I did. Um, it's up to you if you want to see if you can save some for a later project or something, but I used the whole sheet. So then we have all of our little torn up little crinkle balls, and we have the piece of 9 by 12 watercolor cardstock with the score line down the center. If you want the smooth side to be on the front, once you put your ledger paper over it, it's not going to matter. So you can do whatever you want to do with that. <laughs> um, 
then you're going to need to get out your glue i'm going to use the art glitter glue because this has this little brown paper has wax on it um you might find depending on the glue that you're using that it doesn't want to stick very well the art glitter seems to stick it just fine so that's what i'm going to use and so at this point before i glue i uncrinkle them and i'm, I'm not pressing it out i'm not ironing it i'm just uncrinkling it and then i want to make sure that the this piece happens to have a smooth torn edge like a smooth edge that we cut with scissors and then this rough torn edge the rough torn edge is the one that we want to point to the outside edge of our journal cover and then we're going to take these and we're going to glue them to where they overhang can you see that where they overhang past the 9 by 12 cardstock right we want that overhang to be pretty decent. Um, you can always go back in at the end if there's something that sticks out too far and tear a little more of it off. But once you glue this down, if you glue it too close to the cardstock edge, you might have a spot where the cardstock shows through. If so, it's not the end of the world. You may actually desire that look, and so you might do it on purpose. But you can always tear some off if you go if you leave it stick out too far, you could always tear some off. But if you glue it down, you can't really, like that's harder to fix later if you don't like it, right? So I'm not saying leave inches hanging off, but I'm saying leave a good bit, just use your own judgment. And then also something to pay attention to is see how you know we need to plan for this corner right here. Um, this one has that little serrated edge. I don't know that I like that, so I'm just gonna tear it, right? I don't want that little serrated edge. Just plan for your corner so that you have nice overhang on the corner on both sides. Hopefully you're seeing that, I'll hold it up closer, but just plan for your corner where you've got overhang this way and this way. And then you wanna glue your strips sticking off, if that's the look you're going for, all the way around. And the way I did it is you glue a brown strip and then the onion skin strip and then another brown strip. You can do this however you want to do it. If you don't want any brown or you don't want any onion skin or you want to stick fabric or lace or something else in there, go for it. <laughs> okay. A nice grubby edge. You could even ink these if that's the look that you want. I'm not inking, but yeah, you could do whatever you wanted to do there. <laughs> right, right. Everybody with me? Outside right. So we're gluing right now. This is this is my top cover facing facing up. Like this is where my cover is on the front and then underneath is where my cover is on the inside of my journal. For this this layer of brown, I'm gluing on the top then I'm going to come in and glue a layer of brown here and a layer of white in between. Does that make sense? <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll show you on that too. Right now I'm gluing brown all the way around the outside of the top of my journal cover, the face of my journal cover. Well, there's plenty of time. We don't have to hurry. So if you guys need me to slow down, just holler out. And so I'm going to start gluing. And basically, I just, I kept my glue a little bit away from the edge because I didn't want my glue to seep out. So you guys can do however you think you need to do for gluing. But, yeah. And then... And then I just smoothed it out with my fingers just for the glue. So that's my first piece glued on. And I'm gonna continue to glue these strips all the way around the edge. And I'm doing the brown right now on this side. So there's my next piece. I flattened it out. I don't like that little serrated part right there from the bag. I tore it off. And that's my next piece piece and when you when you have a start and a stop just overlap them a little bit it 
it's actually better to have the more layers than than have a gap right there you know so just overlap them a little bit and then you can see on this side my piece is too long and so i'm going to go ahead and glue it and then i'll just tear it a little bit to tear it down to size so i put a little bit of glue right there making sure i'm gluing all the way back there and then there and then there and then i put on my next piece overlapping a little bit and then tear it right there that's way too much but totally fine and then that's that side then i'm going to save this little piece in case i need it to fit somewhere and i'm going to start with the whole piece again now this piece is kind of straight all the way around not going to matter I'm going to double it up right there at the corner and keep going. And I'm not being super generous with my glue. I'm just using regular amount of glue, honestly. And I've kind of overlapped it up here on the top also. Right like that. And then we're going to go this way. And then right like that. Hello, hello. Vanessa, Vanessa. <laughs> Baby duty. <laughs> Glad you could join us for a few minutes. Sorry you couldn't do the whole night with us. Slow down, sure. <laughs> Vanessa is going to play along. She's supposed to be anyway. She just couldn't do it tonight. So we're going to be gluing these pieces for a little bit here. I'm going to glue this way. It does not matter at all which way you glue. You just want to cover the whole edge. There's a little straight edge here. So I'm just tearing it by hand to make it not straight. And then there's the serrated edge again. Just tearing that off. And then I've got this little section here and I've got that little piece that I saved. So I'm just going to glue that right there. Okay, so my whole entire thing has the craft waxed bag strips all the way around it. Now, I'm going to go slow so nobody feel like they have to, like, be on it right now. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for joining us, girl two. Need some inspiration. Awesome. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> You're sweet, Vanessa. So, the next step is to flip over your cover. We're done working on this side with strips. Now you need to work on the inside of your cover. So just flip it over. And now we're going to put the white strips on this one. So we're going to take those white onion skin strips. And if they're not crinkled enough, like if you want it to be more crinkly, then go ahead and give it another crinkle. And if you like it extra, extra crinkle, just get in there and mush it all around. Yeah, I think the double crinkle is my preference. And if you find a section that for whatever reason didn't get crinkled enough, just crinkle it up. Cool. 
And then we're going to glue the white ones on. Now, when I glue the white ones, you can stick them out just as far as your brown. You can try to stick them out further if you want that white to stick out more. Or you can bring it in if you want to see less of the white. And it's not really white because it's transparent. So keep that in mind. Like even on this one, you don't really see a whole lot of white. It, I mean, there is some sticking out, but it's transparent and it's not the same white as this. It's not the same white as like a piece of paper, right? So that's what that one looked like. And you can see like right here, there's lots of little layers. And that's the look we're going for with this. So then on the inside, you start gluing your white pieces. And then I don't want that straight edge there. Overlapping your corners and your edges. And then, yeah, so we're just crinkling paper and playing with it. It gives a nice faux layered look. Like technically we're layering it, but we're not actually layering whole sheets of paper on and then trying to achieve this perfect torn ruffled edge. We're kind of cheating and making it perfect right off the bat and saving some materials in the meantime. And so then I've got a little bit here. And that glue does seep through the onion skin. Um, not a lot, not where you're going to have a problem with it. But just be aware that you can feel the moisture from it on the top. And so for this one, I need a little bit that goes that way. I'm just going to put it on there overhang it and then tear it and then continue to glue <laughs> so are you guys ready for the weekend? The quilt and what is it? Quilt and something expo is in town. I have never been to the quilt and something expo. <laughs> I don't remember what else it says. Quilt and fabric expo. I'm not sure. Quilt and sewing expo, maybe. Um, yeah, it's in town. And my daughter, like I told you guys, she got a sewing machine for her birthday. And she said she wanted to learn how to quilt. And quilting, you know, um, it can be kind of frustrating for beginner sewers, right? Like, I don't like quilting because it requires precision, more precision than I like anyway. <laughs> um, so, so quilting is not my most favorite thing in the world to do. I have made some very simple things, however, I'm just not really a quilter. Like, <laughs> I just think I've tried and, and it's just really not for me because of the precision. I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm too much of a perfectionist to be able to enjoy it. So I have to stress about it being absolutely pressed perfectly and everything perfectly square and aligned. <laughs> and that just drives my little brain crazy. And it makes me unhappy, right? Because I'm OCD and I, I stress about it. Um, a lot of people are cool with embracing the flaws. I am working on that. And I do that in many aspects of my life. However, not quilting, it's not sewing. <laughs> so I'm much more happier sewing in um, journals on paper than I am. I like sewing some things in fabric, just not maybe quilts. So um, yeah, so I told my daughter about it. And she did not answer me whether she wanted to go or not. And I think she's just super busy because college just started again, you know, like in January. So we'll see if she texts me and says she wants to go. If she does, then we may do that. Um, probably maybe Sunday even. I'm not sure. So we'll see. But she says that she wants to learn how to quilt. And her brain is 
different than mine. Like, I think she could totally do it. And then if it didn't, you know, come out right or square or whatever, she'd be cool with it and she'd be happy. Whereas it would drive me crazy. <laughs> so maybe it's going to be her thing, but not necessarily my thing, which is totally cool. She does make journals um, with me and she's into paper crafting, which is cool. So we can share that. But so, yeah, that's in town. And we were thinking about that. Um, other than that, I'm going to be shipping and packing all weekend, <laughs> which has pretty much been my life now for months. Every single weekend I ship and pack. You guys have seen that because like if you notice, most of your um, labels are printed like either Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So, yeah, that's what I that's what my big weekend plans are. So if we don't go to the quilt show, then it's literally just a weekend of packing and shipping. What are your guys plans for the weekend? Maybe you're going to work on the journal some more. Who knows? I haven't seen it. <laughs> I think it's a fun technique. A, a cheater, a cheater way of getting that perfect layer torn edge paper look. Quilt Expo would be awesome. Yeah, I love quilts. I love, love quilts. I think that they're awesome. I would love to, you know, find a designer and, you know, if they had one that just, you know, matched my colors or whatever. Um, yeah, I've always had quilts. I just don't currently have quilts in my home. Like I've had them hung on walls before. Um, I've actually had some very expensive, nice ones before. Um, I've sold probably hundreds of, you know, handmade antique quilts, you know, cause I owned the antique store. And so quilts were very popular there. Um, even being in Arizona, you know, it's not like the rest of the country where there are many, many quilts. Arizona has some, but not not as many antique ones as, say, Pennsylvania or something does. And so, yeah, I I appreciate them. I, I really like them. I would like to have a nice one that I felt comfortable using on my bed, not necessarily sleeping with it, but just like, you know, um, draped across the bottom or something like that. Um, right now, my master bedroom is super neutral colors. Um, so I think it would be nice to have a pop of color in there, but I have to find the right one, you know? So yeah, if we went, I probably would end up buying a whole entire quilt. <laughs> we'll see. I have been collecting fabric for forever and I often think about, well, I can make a quilt with this. I could do this with it. I could do that with it. But will I? Probably not. They're mostly fabrics for journal covers at this point. So I told you guys my weekend plans. What is your weekend's plan weekend plans? Organize your beads last night? That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. Carol, did I say hello to you? If I didn't, hello. <laughs> Hi, J Mac. Working tomorrow night? Karaoke queen bartender. That's awesome. Cleaning your craft room. Yep. Necessary evil, right? Antique shopping. Ooh, fun, fun. It is. They they do say that. I haven't been to this one, right? And um, it's at the fairgrounds. So it's a pretty big place. It does say that it has um, like it has a list of things that it has. It does say paper crafting. So I was intrigued by that part of it. But mostly when I go to even paper crafting events here in Arizona, they are, I haven't seen any junk journal stuff at all, ever. I've never seen a junk journal maker at a paper crafting, even like scrapbook expo doesn't have junk journals here. So yeah, your mom was a quilter, Judy. That's awesome. That's exactly what I would love to do, Judy. Yep. That's exactly what I'd love to do. Yeah. That's awesome. Triple girl two work full time. So spends a lot of time on the weekend crafting. Set a big chunk of time for crafting. Cool. Very cool. Deborah's going to deliver mail. That's right, Deborah. You are on Saturday, right? But on Sunday, maybe they still would they still do work on Sundays? 
Well, Becca, <laughs> if we go, I will report back and let you guys know what else was at mine. Starting a new journal, Cheryl. Ooh, awesome. Working Saturday order. Yep, got it. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Organizing beats is tedious. When I did mine, I did them by color and oh my goodness, drove me crazy because they're all in these plastic boxes. And so I had to spoon out all the ones that were the wrong color and then transfer them to their all respective, you know, red, green, blue, et cetera boxes. It took days, it was terrible. <laughs> I never wanna do it again. Hello, keeping it real. Binding her journal. Awesome, awesome. Paper pieces through your hamsters. So funny, Joyce. Yes, happy birthday to your niece. <laughs> the floor, yes. My vacuum hates it when I have out beads. <laughs> awesome. Oh, thanks, Vanessa. Thumbs up does help the channel. Thank you. Super kind. <laughs> okay, so I'm not moving on yet. I'll give you guys time, but we have the brown paper on the front part of our journal and we have the white paper on the inside of our journal. And then we want to put more brown paper over top of the white paper on the inside of our journal. So you have some more brown paper little bits. Go ahead and start gluing them over top of the white paper. And for these ones, you can make them extra crispy, extra crinkly. You don't have to, it doesn't really matter. But then you're gonna layer them on the same way as we've been doing. Leah. <laughs> so funny. So, yep, gluing, gluing, gluing. <laughs> Vintage buttons. <laughs> the brown paper that I'm using is the waxed glassine bags. And if you guys need some, then I, I have extra of those. I have like a thousand of them. So, all right. I made that one extra crinkly just for the heck of it. You could also do this with um, like a brown paper bag torn into strips. If you have like a thin, you know, it's better if it's thin, but it will work with regular thickness grocery sack if you still have paper grocery sacks where you live or can find one. Paper lunch sacks from your kids' lunches or husband's lunches, whatever, your lunches. <laughs> Yep, you got to rip whatever you need. It's a waxed, it's a craft or brown waxed sack. So I didn't wax it, it comes that way, right? Like it's a special type of wax glassine that is craft colored or brown colored. And I like it because it has a unique texture and it's also transparent. And when you crinkle this one up to, um, when you crinkle it up in your hand, the creases actually leave lines like cracked leather and it actually creates a really cool look. And the same thing with the onion skin that I chose, 
it's because it's unique paper and I'll try to show you up close. So this is the waxed sack one and you can see that it actually leaves all those white cracked leather look um, lines in it. Even if you straightened it back out flat, those lines are in there. And I like that look around the edge of the journal. So that's why I've chosen it. Chosen it. <laughs> Use your words. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this across and then fill in those two, I think. No, I'm not. I'm going to keep doing it the way I was. So I'm going to put that there, overlapping just a little bit. And then I'm going to tear off this edge right here and keep going. And if you need to tear more, you did have a little bit of left over there. So there's more than plenty to go around. And if you wanted to go around more than one time, you, you know, more than one or two, whatever number we're doing here, you can keep going around as much as you need to go around. You want, if you wanted to put colored paper in here and, and mix in a color, you could do that. You could do whatever you wanted to do. If you wanted to put lace in between a layer of this, you could do that. So crinkling it up. The messy palette. Hello, hello. It would. It's waxed, so you got to find the right kind of ink to color it, but yes. The more ripping, the better. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do my last little section here, and then I'm finished with all of my strips. Just got my finger in my glue. And that's my last little section there. So at this point, I've gone around with brown on the front, with white and then brown on the back. And now I'm just going and not that you really need to because we're going to glue paper on both sides of this. It's not going to matter. Um, but I'm just gluing down those overhanging bits just a tiny tiny bit the messy palette angela no maybe not forgive me messy palette what's your first name again messy diane i'm sorry <laughs> diane angela no, i'm so sorry thanks for coming back though hanging out with us again uh, so, um, I'm going to let my glue dry just a little tiny bit, but as I'm letting my glue dry, I'm looking at my papers and I'm just seeing, you know, do I want to make any adjustments? And I kind of like to just go around and get that crinkling started, right? And I'm just kind of pushing it a little bit this way. I'm not being harsh. My glue is not really dry. So... I'm just kind of giving it a squish and a crinkle all the way around. Just kind of helping it get settled. And so at this point, I'm basically just looking at it and seeing do I want to go ahead and start tearing some of this off in places where there's too much or it's too straight or, you know, just, just kind of start playing with it once you get to that point. Just kind of start playing with it and seeing, 
do I like it? Do I not like it? Is it too much? Is it not enough? Because once we glue our papers on, our back and front cover, we're, we're not, I mean, you can, but it's not going to look the same and it, it might be kind of difficult to add some, right? So you want to make sure that you've got it covered before we move on to the next step. And I'm just, you know, looking at it and seeing, okay, well, we have an awful lot there. And instead of taking that whole corner and tearing it, I want to tear each one of these individually, independently, so that it has more of a ruffle look. Like right there, I'll tear that white one, and then I'm going to tear this one, and then I'm going to tear that one. So I'm just starting it, you know, I got an awful lot there, right? And, and you can leave that, and it'll crinkle down, but you may want to tear some off. So just start working around the edge of your cover and do what you think needs done. This process isn't meant to take forever and it's not meant to be perfect because, you know, it's a messy, crinkly look. Get back here. This is wild watching this cover come together. Thank you. So sweet of you. I like this cover. Cutting a word with your cricket. <laughs> Okie dokie. So... The next part is to glue on our front papers. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to save these bigger pieces. Um, I had one ball that was extra. I'm going to save that. We can use that to embellish something or make it a paper ruffle or do something with it, right? So I'm going to save these. I might do something with them. But all these tiny, tiny little pieces that I tore off, those are just going in the bin. We don't really need them for anything, and they're pretty small pieces. If it's a big enough piece where you might use it in a cluster, then I would say save it. And so for me, out of those two things, this is all I have left of the brown paper bag, glassine bag thing. This is all I have left of the onion skin paper. Um, you have more onion skin paper, but that's different. But of the one we used, this is all I have left. So, adding to my scrap pile, right there. And so, at this point, you know, again, it, it really, in theory, does not matter which is your front, which is your back. I'm just going off of the way I scored it. So, I'm just going to show you. When we glue our paper on, we're going to glue our paper right to the edge. And so, here is what we've made but you can bend it with your finger and you can see the edge right there that's the edge of our cardstock when we glue our paper on we're going to glue our paper all the way to the edge of the cardstock and that can be kind of tricky because you can't really see the edge of your cardstock because we we frayed the edge right with all this lusciousness here so when you glue it you're gonna want to find the edge put your glue on and then glue your front panel on, making sure that it's covering the cardstock and not overhanging onto this ruffly goodness. Hopefully that makes sense. Glue your paper onto only the cardstock piece, not the ruffly part. So that takes a minute. <laughs> Glad you're liking it. Hey, Jean. tape you to your chair. I'd like to see somebody try that with Vanessa. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Helps to hold a light. Sure thing. Yep.
for me it's honestly it's not really that hard like you you can totally see and feel the edge there another reason why we're using that thick cardstock so i'm going to go ahead and move on and start gluing my paper on and so i'm going to use this one and i'm gluing it to the front the front face of the journal i'm not gluing it to the inside part i'm gluing it to the front so like this is the inside of my cover this is the outside front of my cover and then i'm going to glue that one there and i'm going to do mine sideways right there and that's how mine's going to go this piece is going to overlap that piece just a little bit because there isn't much writing right here so I'm just going to overlap mine. Actually, I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I like to you all. So remember how I was saying, like, I want the most handwriting possible. I cut this piece big enough to overlap this piece a little bit. But this piece just has all this white at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and trim some of it off. Do I have to? No. But I'm being fussy with it. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it. A little bit more. I'm trying to line it up with the line, but we'll see. That one has a smidge of handwriting on it, so I'll save it. Okay. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and put glue on. And I'm going to keep using the art glitter glue. You're going to make it later. That's awesome, Vanessa. So we're going to cover the whole panel. So I'm just going to start by putting glue around the edge. And see how I'm holding it with my finger to find where the edge is? That's really all that you need to do. It's not really hard. I just wanted to point out that you got to glue it to the cardstock piece and not the ruffle. like where the cardstock is. Does that make sense? Hopefully you guys are seeing it good enough. I'll hold it up here in just a second. Do you have to be this precise? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. And then I just put some in the middle. This is our front cover, so I do want it glued down especially that part there where the waxed paper is. Waxed paper is just notoriously um, difficult to glue things to, so I'm just making sure that I over glue it rather than under glue it. And then with art glitter glue, you really only get one shot, so you're just going to do it. And then you're going to use your fingers and bend it over and make sure that it is where it needs to be good there. It needed to go that way just a smidge. Just a smidge. Thank goodness for that wax paper at that point. And there we go. Just bend it over with your finger and get it lined up. And there we go. And then if you have a bone folder or little scraper or even, you know, a, the side of a pencil, you're not pushing real hard. You're just trying to smooth out some of that glue and making sure everything is stuck down. And so right there, this little piece of brown craft paper ruffled back in on itself. And I'm just fixing that. And then squish it down. And squish it down and that's our front cover you make it completely to the edge carol you the piece of german paper all the way to the very edge of your cardstock and you find the edge by folding back your little ruffles if it's off by a little bit no one is going to know because you have all these ruffles but 
it would be better if you get it all the way to the edge as much as you can. And then, yeah, that's good. And then we're going to do the same thing for our back. So just get them on there the way that you want them. Now, I will say with this one, when you put these this piece of paper, you want to try to line that up with your other piece of paper so that you don't have one higher and one lower. So make sure that that one gets lined up like that. That's really the only thing to worry about there. So just get them on. You might try glue stick if, if that's all you had, but I think that the um, art glitter is probably the better way to go with that. And for whatever reason, mine is just a hair too big. So I'm going to trim that down just a smidge. Check yours before you glue it. It's just off by a tiny hair. So I'm going to take a little bit off right there. Ah. <laughs> Got to hold it. It moved on me. There we go. Do you that up really big space? Okay. So again, just kind of get an idea of where your edge is all the way around. An idea where your corner is. Get an idea down there. And then go ahead and put your glue on. And see the way when I hold it, I just bend it back so I can see my edge. It kind of helps. So who's with me and who gave up already? Hopefully nobody gave up already. And there's that. Still here, right with me. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, get my panels on. And I'm just making sure that this is straight up against my other sheet of paper and level at the top. Those are the most important things in this part. Cool. Very cool. And then for this guy, you could cut two and make them that way if you wanted to keep the writing the same way. I'm going to do it just like that. So I'm making it level across the bottom, even to my first paper that I glued down. And you can see that this one is just a hair too long right there. So I'm going to cut that before I let it glue all the way down. The joys of cutting on the Tim Holtz cutter. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's on. And then if you need to come back, if you overlapped like me and you need to come back and glue this, then go ahead and do that now. And there we go. Honestly, this one didn't leave bumps for me. Um, 
Fabri-Tac is an option if you wanted to, but Fabri-Tac is not my choice when I'm gluing onto waxed surfaces or glassine. It may work just fine. In the past, to me, on slick surfaces that are like non-stick like that, um, the Fabri-Tac didn't hold as well as the art glitter glue. So that's my front cover. Now all of this will be adjusted and, and made perfectly not perfect, right? <laughs> perfectly imperfect. But I want to get this part covered before we move on. And you're like, well, we didn't cut anything for that part. <laughs> Nice, Casey. So moving to the inside cover. Kind of find my inside papers. <laughs> well, Cheryl, I think your brain takes you, uh, takes you in some beautiful places. So I'm excited to see what you do. Awesome, awesome. Okie dokie. <laughs> so for the inside, you get to choose what you want to cover this. Um, for the very first one that I did, I used the same, I just had a second sheet of ledger. On this one, I kind of thought maybe we would do something different. You can use many things in your kit I was thinking either the French ledger, a kit page, pardon my reach there in front of you, but the rest of the kit has many, many things in it. And so I kind of wanted something different, right? Like this for me, it's, it's nice, but it's like the same and the same. There wasn't a whole lot of visual interest, right? I kind of wanted to see something different when I opened up the journal. I know you're going to see something different with your signature, but I kind of wanted to see something different here. So for this one that I'm making, we get to choose. And this is totally personal choice, right? Like if you liked a kit page, you would just glue a kit page in there, right? And I will say, um, if you're gonna glue a whole sheet of paper in here and fold it, scoring it first will help you. Um, you can do it without, but you might get a ripple if you didn't score it first. So that's something to consider. So I might glue a kit page there, even though I printed them double-sided, I still might glue one there. You just, it's personal choice. Pick whatever you want to glue in there. If you need to cut something down to a size to make a front panel and a back panel, it's going to cut to nine inches by six inches for the front and nine inches by six inches for the back. If you use a kit page, it is just ever so slightly smaller than the piece of watercolor cardstock. But because we've overlapped all the way around, you're never going to see the white cardstock anyway. So honestly, it will fit just fine there if you want to do that. And that might be what I'm doing. I'm not sure yet. I'm just digging in my kit to see. And the kit is from Ruby and Pearl. And most of the kit is Ruby and Pearl. There are some pages that were my digitals that I printed mostly on the back sides of Ruby and Pearl. But yeah, so you can do whatever you want to do inside of the cover. So I'm just going to take a minute. You're all catching up to me and we'll get moving on. You might just want copy dye paper if that's what you wanted. I don't know. Maybe you wanted to put music on the inside. In that case, you would just cut it down to size and put it on the inside. That's an option too. Maybe you want the rag paper on the inside. Many, many options. If you wanted to put your sheet of ledger paper, your French ledger paper in there, then go ahead and glue that one in. Me too, Vanessa, me too. There's the regular onion skin. For me, I think it's gonna be a kit page. I just like them, I think they're pretty. 
and there's many different options, right? So maybe that one would be good in there. There's the stripey one that could go in there just as pattern. So many good options. Awesome, Becca. Fingers are covered in glue. That's why I had that baby wipe out. Barely arts. I have never had good luck with that. Maybe it's because I live in Arizona. Glue is different for me here because it's so hot and so dry. I know Barely Arts is similar to the um, Fabri-Tac. When I used it, the only time I've used it was at a craft show and we were doing a make and take and I just could not get it to come out of the bottle. <laughs> and maybe it was because it was at a craft show and a make and take too, you know? Because like, you know, everyone uses it all day long. Who knows? I see it on Amazon. It's right. It always pops up every time I go to order art glitter. So. <laughs> okay. So for the page in there, I'm going to put, maybe I want that one in there. I keep going back to this one. I think I'm going to put that one in there. And that's good too, because it, it is a different size. And so if you were using something else at home, it's probably going to be eight and a half by 11. So that's a really good, good one to do so because it's eight and a half by 11 right it's eight and a half this way and it's 11 inches this way I need to cut it in half to have a front panel and a back panel so I'm going to cut that 11 inches in half to five and a half inches is what you use in place of art glitter because it freezes that's right because you can't get art glitter to ship in the winter time right i i obviously never have that problem in arizona but i know other people do really i might have to actually buy a bottle and try it in home and see if it's different than at the craft share show thing gets too runny in your heat. See, it's very different for everyone, isn't it? Very different. So cutting my panel to five and a half inches. And I just decided to cut it. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to bring my panels all the way out to the edge and leave this strip of white here in the center because my signature is going to be there and I'm probably going to put fabric in there. So that's kind of what I was thinking. Haven't wholly decided on it yet, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. So when I glue these panels, I want to make sure like this one was folded over and I didn't want to glue it down like that. So I just made sure that it was up. Do I want the writing at the bottom or do I want the writing at the top? I want the writing at the bottom. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking about that. And then I'm thinking to cover the center right here, I'm going to put a piece of fabric. Now this is where I'm going off script. If you want to just make it like this one and you just want to line it with whatever you want to line it with that's not cut in half and you didn't put fabric then you go ahead and do that <laughs> and if you guys would rather me not go off script then you need to tell me that <laughs> so i have some torn fabric and i'm just going to see how that looks in here I think glues are very specific to the climate. I really think that they are. Um, because 
I know everyone loves the uh, the Uhu glue stick. For me, Uhu, the first ones I've tried did not work at all in my climate. However, now I have ordered another case of it. And I tried two different orders at Amazon the first time I tried it. Because I'm like, everyone is saying this is awesome. How can it suck for me? <laughs> I don't mean to say suck, but honestly, how, how can it suck for me? It was just horrible. It was so dry that I put it on and then tried to like instantly flip over something and glue it down. And it was already dry by the time I went to stick it. It would not stick for me at all. So I bought another stick thinking, okay, well, I just got a bad stick. And these were the blue magic glues, both of them. And then I, you know, Tried the second one, and the second one was exactly the same. So then I was like, okay, well, Uhu just doesn't work for me. And I assumed it was because it was so dry where I was. Then I moved on to finding, you know, a regular basic Amazon glue stick. And it was these ones. And these are my all-time favorite. But they don't make the big size anymore. At least it's not available where I live. So I can't get the big ones of these anymore. They sell the small ones of these, the chapstick size ones. And I thought about, you know, maybe it would be nicer having the smaller glue stick. But at the same time, if you're trying to cover something quick and glue it down, like it's going to take a long time to cover it with the small glue stick, right? So just recently, because I'm almost out of the Amazon one, I got these ones again. And this is the same one that I tried the first time. But these ones are quite moist and, and wet and they seem very sticky. So I'll have to see if stuff starts peeling up, but so far it's been good. Now, maybe I tried them the first time in the summertime and now it's wintertime. So maybe it's just that part. I have no idea, but they seem okay now. So we'll see. <laughs> the glue fiasco is ongoing, right? So if I did this, that's where I would be at. And I think I like it. I think I like it because I'm honestly thinking I'm probably going to put lace down this spine of this once we're done, but I might put this fabric down it. I don't know. We'll have to see. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down my panels because that's what I've decided I'm doing. And I also decided I'm putting this torn piece of fabric down mine. If you don't want to do that, then don't do it. If you want, if you're just using a kit page because you don't have anything else and, and I didn't give you anything else, then put the kit page in just like this and your cardstock is going to overhang, but it's completely covered and it's totally fine. Or cut it in half and leave that little space there knowing that your signature is going to be here and it's going to fluff out and you're not really going to see this part of white cardstock here. If you're super concerned about it, and you think that you are going to see that, take another strip of this brown paper and put it down the center and then put your pages so that even if once your signature was sewn in, you saw a little bit of where that cardstock would be, it would be the brown color. And honestly, no one would ever think twice about seeing that. <laughs> so that's how you can approach covering the inside. Or at least that's how I'm approaching it. You do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Not the blue one. See, I haven't tried the white one either. But I don't know what the difference is in all honesty. Does one say permanent and the other one says not permanent? I don't, I don't really know. So I'm going to glue this down now. And I'm going to do the same thing I did on the front where I find my edge, in theory, and I glue it. Is everyone covering the inside? Have you moved past me because I talked too long? And I'm just guessing where this page is going to go at this point. It's not going to matter because I'm going to cover it. Okay, and I wanted my writing to be down at the bottom 
And for me, the most important thing is getting it on the edge there. So I'm just trying to do that. And if I have messy glue, like you can see I do, then I'm not going to worry about it. I'll wipe it off with this baby wipe. Good thing that it's on waxed paper bag. There we go. Perfection. <laughs> Just bought the Pritt stick. I know that people say they love the Pritt stick. I know that they say that. I cannot get Pritt stick where I live. I have looked and cannot get it. Could order it from Italy, but if you're not sure on the glue stick, I'm not going to pay $30 shipping from Italy. So there's that. Let's do the next one. And then I'm just trying to keep them level here and at the bottom and get it to the outer edge out here. And you can see that one's a little crooked. Not going to matter. I'm going to put fabric on it. Totally fine. Okie dokie. Now, for that fabric in the center, Fabri-Tac 90% of the time. Sometimes, I'm, I'm really bad about this. Sometimes I will choose a glue only based on how well it will come off my finger when I'm done. When I get glue all over my fingers and it takes me like half an hour in the sink trying to get it all off, sometimes I choose a glue only because it comes off my hands easier in the end. <laughs> I do not like having glue stuck on my fingers. It really does bother me. So this is my piece of fabric. I'm going to glue it down the center and I am going to use Fabri-Tac for that part, but I want to be careful when I put my Fabri-Tac on this that I'm not putting Fabri-Tac directly in the crease right here. I'm going to keep it away a little bit because if you've ever had to poke holes um, either with the awl or sewing in your signature or whatever with your needle, Fabri-Tac is kind of a hard glue once it dries, so I just try to keep it out of the crease where I'm going to sew in my signature just to make it easier on myself to poke in the holes with the awl. So it's going to go like that. And I'm going to put it on there. call on the keeping my hands cleaner <laughs> sometimes like you know sometimes I'm making something and I have to go somewhere and like it wouldn't be appropriate to go there with glue all over my fingers so I got to be quick about it and clean so I'm just eyeballing this keeping it away from where I'm sewing in the signature and I will come in and add glue to the outer edge if I want to of the fabric once I've got it down there. I've overcut my fabric deliberately, so. Yep. And then that fabric tuck went right through that fabric. So that's what I've got there. That's what I've got there. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit before I completely fold it. But that's basically our cover other than trimming and cleaning up that outside crinkly edge. Who's with me so far? Did I throw you for a loop on the inside cover? Glue webs hanging off your fingers. Yep, it happened. 
<laughs> now triple girl i triplet girl i'm sorry i keep calling you triple girl i didn't see the t until literally just now i sorry about that <laughs> a lot of people bought a kit from me the neutral journal kit and have the same supplies and so they're they're literally making it exactly the way i'm making it or or at least they're making the same making a neutral journal from the kit with me <laughs> so if i check in with them and say are you with me i'm waiting to see if they're making it with me if they're caught up perfect all good awesome 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 okay so that's okay to fold basically like i'm not going to hard fold it but you can kind of get an idea like because we cut our cover to the exact six inches it's got a little bit of a lip there once we sew in our signature like you can see just the edge where we cut it we're going to put lace over top of our signature strings and that both holds in your signature better and covers up your edge there i like to cover up my signature strings probably eight, nine times out of 10, because the signature strings are right on the spine of the journal. Um, if you're doing a decorative thing where you're putting like buttons or jewels or beads or something in your signature strings, then obviously you wouldn't cover that up with lace. But when I'm doing a plain signature string on the outside part, I wanna cover it up to hold it in with glue. It makes it sturdier. And I think it just gives a better look. And it doesn't have to be lace, it can be fabric, it can be whatever you wanna use, but I do like to cover it. Um, sometimes you sew in your signature and your tails come out the back and you can put beads on them or charms or whatever you're doing. You guys can sew yours in and do yours whatever way you want to. But for me, I'm gonna do a regular um, three hole pamphlet stitch and my strings are gonna come out the center so that I can put charms on. And then I'm gonna put the lace or fabric probably going to put the same fabric down the spine. We'll see when I get there. So for me, I like to decorate my cover once I get a feel for the journal. I kind of have a plan with this one, right? Because we, we put together a kit. So I kind of have a plan with it. But a lot of times decorating that cover for me, like putting whatever I'm putting on the cover, happens very near, if not the very end of the journal. And it's just so that as I work in the journal, like I might have a plan right now for exactly how I think this journal is going to go. But the more I work on it, maybe I get a different idea or maybe something else just looks better. And so I kind of change the way that the journal's going, the, the decorating of the journal, the style of the journal. It kind of evolves as I'm making it. And so I don't want to lock myself in by saying this is exactly what I want on my cover until I'm further into it. <laughs> If you know exactly what you want on your cover, then you go ahead and start that process if that's what you want to do. For me, I'm going to leave it plain for now and I'm going to work on assembling the signature and possibly sewing it in is my next step. Before I get to there, I want to deal with this. And so you can see when I pull this back, when I pull this back, see how you can see the cardstock right there? You can. My plan, the way I did the first one, is I went in and I glued closer to the edge. You can do that. You can just leave it. It doesn't really matter. I'm probably going to go glue closer to the edge and let that dry for a minute. And then I'm going to start shaping the whole edge of my journal. I kept it away because I wanted to make sure that I didn't glue these two pieces together, the white and the brown. And I wanted to make sure I didn't seep glue out the edge because it's going to be hard and you're going to see it. So for now, I'm just going to go very quickly around the edge and glue closer to that. And it's just very light glue because, again, I don't want it to seep out. So I'm doing that there. And just press it down with your finger. And then I'm just checking the whole way, like right here. These ones are all glued fairly, fairly close. Like, you know, there's a little bit maybe there once I pull it back harder that you could get a little tiny bit of glue, but honestly, not much. Then I'm going to check here and here we could use a little bit of glue. Like right there. That's good. 
kind of check in there. That's pretty tight, except for when we get to the corner. So just make those little tiny adjustments all the way around on the front and the back, the, the outside and the inside of the cover. And then the corner right here, we want to make sure we get that corner glued down because it gets a lot of wear, right? And then we want to check right there. And that's all pretty glued. So then I'm flipping it over and I'm checking this side. And I really don't have any cardstock showing anywhere on this side. So I'm good there. The neutral is one of my favorites, favorites. I like color too, but I think sometimes it's, sometimes it's fun for me to challenge myself by limiting my craft supplies. So when I limit myself to only neutrals, <laughs> I have a lot of neutrals, right? Like I have a lot of antique papers and, and I like that kind of thing. But when I limit myself, it, it kind of makes it fun and interesting. It's like a, I don't know. I have a lot of supplies to choose from. I'm, I'm pretty blessed that way, right? But sometimes it's just really nice to pare down your choices so that you can be more creative because you're not bogged down by, well, do I use this? Do I use that? That's kind of the way I approach it. Got to go through fabrics for your inside. I get it, Joyce. I get it. Missed the T as well. Yeah, I did. I so sorry. Okay, so it's glued. We know no cardstock is going to show. Now I'm going to start really fine tuning this edge. And for me, this is a little too much here. So I'm going to tear that. Maybe I want to tear that a little. Maybe I want to tear that. And I'm trying not to tear them all together because they're going to come out looking exactly like right there where I just got them all on accident. It's going to be too perfect. So you want to tear each little layer by itself. And you don't have to tear it. You can totally leave it. And if it's too long over time, it's going to wear off itself, right? And that's kind of the beauty of this journal is it starts out kind of worn already. And then over time, it's just going to continue to get better and better. Now, right here for this little seam, where there were two pieces seamed together. I just want to glue that a little better. It's just flopping up a little too much for me, so I'm going to glue it. I should have filled my art glitter glue before I came in here. We'll probably have enough for tonight. but And then right here, it's, it's pretty floppy and pretty chunky, so I'm just going to tear some little chunks off. And I, I think it looks better when I tear it a little bit like little chunks at a time where it's not like a big long strip. And like right here, I have this weird little triangle. Let me tear that off. This is just a little too much here for me. So just go in and make some edits. If you want, if you like the way yours is, then you go ahead and keep it. Maybe you want to tear back some of the brown so that you have more white showing. And then as you go, continue to crinkle it. You might press it down like I'm pressing it down with my fingers and making it more flat, more close to the cover. Maybe you put little tears in it. If you like that look. And just keep working it until you've got it to where you're happy with it. My stomach is growling again. I apologize if you can hear it. You always are so polite and say you can't, but it is. Okay, so take a look. I've worked with this side. I haven't worked with this side. It only gets better the more you crinkle it and the more you mess and play with it. 
in my opinion. And so this is a little too perfect for me. And I am trying to avoid these sharp little peaks. I just want to tear it a little rougher than that. Uh-oh. I'm having terrible colors and frills and lace withdrawals. <laughs> Cheryl, I wondered, but you know, you can do your own thing. I fully expect you to do your own thing. And it's not like it's not going to have lace and frills, Cheryl. Just here's what's coming up. You're going to be okay. Just hang out with me a little tiny bit longer because here's what's coming up. We have, we have sari ruffles, we have little polka dot ruffles, we have cheesecloth ruffles, we have lots and lots of little ruffles, some chiffon ruffles. So we have ruffles and we have some of Sheila's bling in neutral colors. So it's not going to be without lace and ruffles and blingy stuff. It just looks that way right now. We're getting there. No withdrawals on my channel. <laughs> so we're working it. Working it. Okay. And I get to this corner and I've got this sharp angle there. So I'm going to take care of that. And this is all pretty much the same there. So take some of that off. You just got to play with it. I know you're teasing. I was just teasing you back. Well, I will say I am not as lacy as you, girl. Um, I do love lace. You know I love lace. You don't have a wall of lace if you don't love lace. But I am not as lacy as you. <laughs> I love how lacy you are, though. You know that. I love lace. I just also love no lace. <laughs> Just depends on the look I'm going for, right? Okay, so I've squished it and squished it and squished it. And I've torn it. And it's nice and crinkly and yummy now. And this is what I edited and tore off. Just to give you an idea. That's what I tore off. Even that pile looks yummy. Okie dokie. So at this point, if you were going to sew around your cover, you would do so. If you're not sewing around it, then cool, you're up to speed with me. <laughs> Let's see if we can fold that. And so that's basically our journal cover for now. I'm probably going to sew around this unless we put a signature in right now. If we put a signature in right now, then I may not sew around it if I cannot get it in the sewing machine after I put the signature in. I know, she really does. I mean, I don't know anyone who can make the perfect little ribbon or sari ribbon or lacy bows, then she just makes them absolutely perfect. I'm hoping to get a journal eventually. And then I will be like, looking at her bows thinking, how can I duplicate these? Now I know for me, it's never ever going to happen. I'm never going to be able to make a Cheryl bow because they're just so perfect. <laughs> But it will drive me crazy until I actually do someday. 
she's not sharing her secret with me either. I haven't asked her in fairness, but she hasn't shared it either. <laughs> okay, so that's basically my cover. Again, there will be decoration. You know, I, I'm I love putting a center piece on my cover, so there will be something there, and then we'll put lace or something down the spine when we're done with it. So that's where we're at. I like it. I think it looks good. Hopefully you guys like it. And that's where we're at. <laughs> Cheryl bows. They're a thing. Joyce, we're talking about Cheryl Hood right underneath your comment there. If you haven't checked her out, you are missing out on a whole lot of loveliness. If you are a lacy bow girl, <laughs> even if you're not a lacy bow girl, girl, just get out. It's amazing. Her journals are amazing. Okay, so we're not done yet. Nobody run off. Let's work on a signature so that we can move forward because we're, you know, we're going to get a, a journal done. <laughs> we're going to get a journal done. So let's figure out what pages we want to use in our signature you can totally use any pages that you have you do not have to use the printed kit i'm using you don't have to use anything that i use you can do your own thing but if you do want to use the kit then that's pretty much what i'll be using other than i'll add in some other pages for interest so i'm going to set my cover off to the side and you can see if you notice, the reason why I use that watercolor cardstock is it is a nice firm cover. It's not too firm, but it's firm. Like it's a nice sturdy cover. And it was easy, right? It was very easy. So <laughs> had to run and take the dog out. I get it, Joyce. I get it. I hear mine out there doing something. I don't know what, but something bad. I'm quite certain. <laughs> so I know that I want to use at least some pages of the kit. So I want the kit, the printed kit from Ruby and Pearl. I know that I want these copy dyed papers. I don't know about all of these neutral colored papers, but probably. I don't know why not. Now is the time to think about whether you want to put a paper doily inside of your signature. If you do, you need to plan for that. I'm not sure that I do, so I'm going to leave mine off to the side. And I know that I want some of these antique rag paper book pages in my signature. Um, you guys know that I like to stagger my pages going in and in the front. I want to stagger them. And then I want to go back staggering to the inside um, middle of my signature. That probably makes no sense, but that <laughs> I'll show you. So I'm going to use these antique rag paper pages in my signature. I chose to give you guys these for a specific reason. They are a variety of neutral colors all in themselves. They're, they're just naturally aged that way. So I, I chose them for a specific reason to give a neutral color palette. I mean, all book pages are neutral, really, but I wanted to give you lights and darks and, you know, more ivories and everything in between. So I want to use a, an assortment of those. I know I want those three. I probably want this guy. And these ones, I'm not sure. That French ledger will go in there. This onion skin with the handwriting will go in there. This document will go in there. And I am famous for thinking that I can fit 50 pages in my signature when you really can only fit like 15 at max. So <laughs> you guys will get to experience that with me now. How many times have I made a journal where I've been like, no, I want it all in the signature. And then you come out with this huge fat gator mouth journal that you, no one can use. So <laughs> I need to par it down a little bit. So I have antique documents to choose from. 
I have book pages to choose from. And then I have my coffee dyed and plain paper. And then I have my kit. And so I've kind of made four piles here on my desk. For the kit pages, I just need to go through and make sure I want them all or if I only want some of them or whatever I'm doing with that. And so I'm going to start. And I like that one. That one can, I mean, I like all of them. Right? So it's not like I'm really choosing, but I know that I want that one. I like the picture. I like the French form. And I like the stripes on the back. I want that one. This is my maybe, this is my yes, so far. That's my yes, that's a yes. So I have one, two, three, four, I have six. So I'm saying yes to this one. You guys have the same pages as me. So yes to that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. These are my maybes. I think I'm going to go ahead and put that guy in. And this guy, I like him very much. There's a couple things that I'm not sure about on this side of the page. So if I use him, I might cover those up just because they're not my absolute favorite. Let me see, let me hold this page off to the side and see if I need to put him in there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kit pages. I feel like that's a lot, of, that's enough kit pages. So I'm gonna leave it at seven and I am not gonna use this guy at the moment. And also keep in mind that I put this guy and whatever was on the front of him in the center, uh, in the inside of my journal. So those are my kit pages. The lamb is your favorite. I love the lamb. He's very cute. Don't let my talk here out. I see, I see. Thanks, Cheryl. I like that, that watercolor cardstock pretty well for that. Sneaks in some snacks. <laughs> okay. So on to coffee dyed pages. I know I want all three of these in there. I just need them for writing space. I like having three in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fold them in half. You can fold yours however you want to fold yours. But for me, I know I'm going to fold them in half. And um, on the coffee dyed paper, I have some that are thinner and some that are thicker. You guys probably do too. Um, I just wanted to point that out because some of them we may be using um, to glue things on later to decorate with. So keep that in mind. Okay, for these guys, he's just going to get folded in half. him in half. This guy this guy I'm going to fold a little differently. I'm going to fold him in half. And then I'm going to fold in that back page. And it's just because I want some that are a different size, right? So I folded them in half. And then I almost folded this all the way in. Not quite. Almost. So there's a little flip out page. This guy. This guy I'm going to fold fold him in half this way. Can't get it lined up. Fold him in half. I 
it's bothering me that the way the bottom of this invoice kind of has like this little section here. So we'll see about that. I think I'm going to fold in back like that for now. We'll see. And then this guy in half. You fold your pages however you want. If you want flip outs and things like that, now's the time to do it. So he's going to get folded in half and then he's going to get flipped back. Not flipped off, but flipped back. <laughs> so then I'm going to fold this in right here as a little tiny tuck there. Whether he'll stay a tuck or if I'll glue something else on him, I don't know, but that's that. And then for this one, hmm, if I do that, she's on that side. I'm okay with that. And there she is. Okay. So I put them in no particular order at this point. I've just done copy dyed and I've done kit pages. I don't know about these yet. How many pages is that total? I have 10 folded pages because I used seven kit pages and three copy dyed pages. No, that's, yes, 10. 10. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's beginning. Okay, book pages. I'm going to use these three exactly the way that they are. You guys have the same three. This is dictionary from, I believe, early 1600s. This one might be the 1700s. I'm not sure. And this is the 1700s rag cotton paper. This one is also 1700s with a beautiful frame on each page. So we're going to use those three. This guy, when you're folding your pages, you just want to make sure they're going to fit in your cover. And because this is a bigger cover, bigger than eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. We've got room so we can do him in there. Um, still not sure about those. I know I want the onion skin one in there. So I'm gonna do him in half. I like to do the onion skin in half only because when it's in the journal and it's flipped around something else, it kind of creates that see-through curtain or as if you have like something underneath you're going to be able to see it and so I don't want to make a flip out or anything else with him I just want him in half and he adds basically nothing to the signature thickness because it's onion skin so and this is just a French document and I'm just going to fold it in half and put it in there are some of these scanned and printed in the kit also this is the French ledger page that was in my kit and he will fit in there in half. So he's just going to go in half. These three still don't know if we need, so they are going to remain off to the side for just a second. Good night, triplet. Thanks for joining us. Okay, let's work on assembling this so that we can see how the pages flow together. I put the coffee dye in one stack. I put the kit in another stack. I put the book pages in yet a third stack. Get those ones out of the way. And then I put my antique ephemera pieces, whatever. They're not really ephemera. Uh, antique pages in another thing, in another pile. And when I assemble my journal, we also have this music page. When I assemble my journal, I want to think about separating out the pages so that they're not all clumped together. Like for me, I don't want all three copy dyed right next to each other. And I don't want kit pages back to back with kit pages. I want to put, you know, a book page in between a kit page in between a copy dyed page, if that makes sense. And I'm only explaining that. Hello, Corey. Thanks for joining me. I'm only explaining that because we do have some new new junk journalers in here. Maybe they never made a journal before or something like that. And so I am kind of going over some of the basics. Here is a music page that we could use. And I actually really like the fact that this is torn. Um, 
just for me, I'm going to go ahead and tear around the rest of the border of it. I am leaving some white for now, but I'm just going to go ahead and tear around the border of it. One thing I did forget to bring in here was the distressing tool because I always forget to bring it in here. And see how when I tore it, it has all these points on it. I don't really like those points and I know that you can tear it better and straighter than I just did and not get those points, especially if you use a tear ruler or a regular ruler. But when I do get a lot of those points, I just kind of run them through my hand to soften them, squish them down. If it folds over on itself like that, all the better. And just crinkle them up much like you did that paper around the outside border of the journal cover and just keep crinkling. So that's the music page. And I'll put him in the book page pile for now. I do have another sheet of music that I'm probably going to use for a farmer or something else. So I need to decide, first of all, two things. I need the very first page that when you open this journal cover up, I need the very first front page that you're going to see. And I need that to be beautiful, right? Because it's the very first thing you're going to see. The other thing I need to plan for is when you have all of your signatures sewn in, what page do you want to be your center spread of your journal? So the center page in your whole signature, what do I want that to look like? So this is a great option. Um, you know I'm going to stagger some smaller pages in here too, but this is a great option for the center. It also is a great option for the front. So that probably is my center for the time being and, and we'll see what i choose for the very first page when i open up the journal i don't really want half a page when i open up the journal um, it might be the one with the lamb it's pretty sweet looking that might be a good first page you've got this one you've got that and that might be also pretty so maybe that not really looking for for, for that and I'm not really looking for that to be the first page of the journal. So for me, for the very first page that you see, it's going to be one of these two with other pages layered over top of it. Um, I'm probably going to choose this one with the lamb because I'm probably going to layer over top of it book pages, right, to, to stagger it. If I chose this one and then layered small book pages over it, it's just a whole bunch of text, you know, because this is just text. So that's why I'm going with the picture and we'll leave these ones off to the side for now. So this is my center spread and this is my first page. That's yours. <laughs> yep, yeah, Vanessa, if you can pop it in, that'd be great. If you can't pop it in, then I will here in a sec. I know, Vanessa, book pages. <laughs> okay, so first page. Now, I like to stagger some small things over top of this. So I know that this is my smallest book page, this one with this frame. So I'm going to go ahead and put him over this page. This is how I assemble my signature. So I could do that. But I did see that when I open him up, there's this page and it's a little more interesting. So I'm going to fold him backwards because I want to see that. You can fold him backwards. Not going to hurt anything. So there he is. And I like that. That's cute. But I need something else, right? Like here's this one and here's that one. And now I need something that's middle sized, right? So I could go with another book page. But then I would just be layering text upon text. So I'm looking for something different. I might choose this music. It is different, right? Like I could put the music in between there. Let's see what that looks like. If I can get it open. So if I put this one in there, it might look something like that. Now I've got all this white border here. Don't necessarily like that. I could fold this one backwards because, again, this side of the music page, this is the front side, this is the back side. Well, the back side is more interesting. So I might fold it backwards like that, just like I did that first page. 
and you can kind of see some music. I can stagger them when I sew them in and, and peek out some more music. That's not terrible looking. I don't hate it. We might play with that for now. Or I could put one of these handwriting pages in instead of the music. I'm wondering how you're putting this picture together. <laughs> so I could put him in there. And then I could put my book page in there. And that way you've got that that seal popping out there. And it doesn't have to pop out all the way. I kind of want to see this journal page, this kit page behind it. I could do that, right? That's an option. It's not terrible. I kind of like it. I might want to put that music one over it too. I'm not sure. I just need to see it first. That's kind of cute. I do wish that this one was coming out more. So I might actually go in and fold it to where I can see it a little bit more. It's totally acceptable to refold your page. It's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to fold it out just a hair, just, just so I can see what it looks like, if I can see more of that showing through. So I refolded it. It now sticks out more. And now I've got that. And I'm like, okay, well, that's nice, but I would like a little bit more music showing. But I also don't like how this is all the way over covering that picture. So those are just all the things that I'm thinking about right now as I'm doing it. So I'm refolding that court document again, and it is antique rag paper. Not, it is rag paper, but it's handmade rag paper from France too. So it's a little different. It's very sturdy and it will take it. It will take the refolding. So I refolded it to where I can see my kit page all the way around. That's where I want it. I'm happy there. Now I have the music one. And for the music one, That's where we're at. I think that is probably good, but it's just that little tiny bit of music that's bugging me. So I wanna see what it looks like if I refold it. I'm just gonna fold it out just a tiny, tiny bit more. Am I being way too fussy? Are you guys over it already? See, now it's lined up with this one though, and I'm probably not gonna like that. So you just got to play with it and make sure that it looks right in your brain. And honestly, you don't have to care about anything that I just did. I'm like, okay, well, I don't like it refolded. So I'm going to put it back on the original fold line and I'm going to leave it there. Okay, cool. I liked the way this looked on top of this antique document on top of the kit page. I'm good now. I don't have to go over it 15 more times. I'm good. <laughs> Could I? Yes, I could because I'm OCD and I just do. So that's the beginning of my journal. That's the first page. Will I go through all of that trouble on every single page? No, but I'd want to in the beginning because that's the first thing you see when you open up your cover. So now I need a page to go inside of this kit page. I don't want another kit page because I don't want a kit page next to a kit page with nothing in between. If you're adding in a page somewhere or you're doing something different, then you might do that. But for me, I'm just stacking signature pages inside of each other. So I just don't want a kit page next to a kit page. I can put a coffee dyed paper in here. That would totally be acceptable. Especially because we have antique document and we have book page here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the coffee dyed paper in there. Then I either want kit page, antique document, or book page. For me, I'm probably going to go kit page just because we're early on and I want to hit that beautiful theme of the journal, right? And so our very first kit page had this picture on it. So I don't immediately want to do another picture. So I'm going to keep that one off to the side and not choose it. Then it's this page, it's this page, this little flower, or this kit page. And if I don't like any of them, 
then I might refold this and I might put it to where I can see whatever is on the inside of this, like refold it that way so that I can see the other side of it. That's just something that you have to play with, you know, to see what you like. I might go like this. I think it's cute. I like it. So I chose that. I chose my little flower picture. And I'm happy there. Sorry, I'm a little bit off camera. But I'm happy there. So we can keep going. Now I need something in here. I don't want another kit page because we, we have a kit page. So now I'm looking for one of these because we just did a coffee dyed one next, last time. <clears throat> I might be over explaining and boring the heck out of you guys. If you guys are over it, I'll just put together the signature and be done. <laughs> so I might put this dictionary page here. I might. It's very similar in color to the kit page. So I might choose this and put this here because it's just different, right? It's lighter. It looks nice. I'm probably going to put something here that flips out, but don't know for sure. I'm going to use book page. Now I need kit page. I just need to pick a kit page that I like. I kind of like this one. It's got document on the inside. I don't know if I want document on the inside right here. And I have two of these, so I pretty much need to get one of them in my journal. I'm going to choose this guy, and I'm going to put him in here. And he looks like, mm, he's a flower, though. We just had a flower. What's this guy? Okay, this guy's the one. <laughs> and so that guy's going in there. And he opens up to that. Then I'm going to put a coffee dyed page in. Because I need another coffee dyed one in here. Then I need another document in here. So I might put this tissue, this onion skin one in here. And then I'm going to put this picture in here because I want to see this over top of this picture. I think that would look nice. I don't know if you guys can see, but onion skin on top of it, you can see the picture through it. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm here. And these are my choices that are left. I know I need to get this dictionary page in here. So we're going to do it. Now, if you're using these antique rag paper pages, you need to look at yours and make sure that your center folds are sturdy. If they're not sturdy enough or you're not sure they're sturdy enough, then you need to put washi tape down the spine or the, the fold of your pages. So this is a folio and it folds down the center because that's where it came out of the book. If it's torn or if you got two pages instead of one and you need to put them together, if it has too many holes, whatever the case may be, if you need to reinforce it, you need to use washi tape to do that. You can use other supplies if you want. One of the things that I like to use is just regular plain, um, regular plain paper medical tape to put down the spine of it. You guys have seen me do that on camera before, I think. And it's just plain white medical tape. And it's paper. It's like basically washi tape that doesn't have a pattern on it. And when I put it on the page, it basically disappears and you don't see it. So if your page is not sturdy or you don't know if it is and you just want to make sure, put some kind of tape on it when you're doing it right now. Like don't wait till later because you're not going to be able to later. It has to go on now. Let me get that up there. <laughs> okay. You guys have any questions? Are you already done and past me and like hurry it up? You might be. I'm going to choose this kit page now, and I'm going to put him right here. That leaves me with that. I could do handwriting and handwriting, or I can do coffee. I'm going to do coffee there. Then I'm going to do the kit page here, and I'm going to do my ledger here and i'm going to do my book page here not quite i'm going to do my center my center signature page here and sometimes you just need to stop and adjust 
and push everything into the center. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do this page. Maybe. I need a couple more small pages or something to go in the center here. And so we have more rag paper. We have this rag paper page. And that might be nice. I don't know. I'm going to fold it and see how I like it. <laughs> you need so time. At least one person answered me. I know you're still there. I want smaller pages is what I want. So I'm just playing with this, seeing if there's anything I can do with it here to, to put it in. I don't know that I love her face there. I, I don't know about that. I might pull out a different rag paper page and put it there. I might put this French handwritten paper there. I'm just kind of playing right now, seeing what I like. If I put this here, it's like handwriting here and handwriting here. Just playing, trying to figure it out. I could fold it up and make pockets. You could have folded any of your pages up and made pockets, and I might go back and do that on some. I'm just playing. I might fold it in and make some kind of flip out thing. So I have decided to make this page a little bit shorter like this and then have a little flip out section here. So I've decided to do that in the center. And then this guy, I'm going to fold him in half. And he's there. And I need one more thing. I just need another layer, right? So I could put that paper doily um, in the center. I could put that, fold it in half, and I'm just going to see what it looks like. I don't know that I want it in there. Again, I'm just playing. I could put that in there and have something like that where it opens up to that. And then I would need a decorative thing here, right? Because that's technically my center. I don't know if I like it. Maybe I want the doily in the center. I'm just playing with it. I kind of like that. The thing that's getting me is this page is long, right? We'll see. What else do I have? I have another music page. He got folded really crookedly. We'll have to refold him. <laughs> My thought process. That's scary. That's really scary. <laughs> My thought process. <laughs> My reasoning. Again, that is scary. <laughs> okay. So let's see what it looks like if I get this music one in here. Again, that white margin is just getting me every single time. And I know I could tear it off, right? I could just tear it down. Okay. It's tear ruler time for this one. I'm going to tear both of these sides just roughly. I don't know if I want that number. I'm going to try to keep that number. And I want them to be rough. I don't want them to be perfect. That top is good. The bottom might be good too. And then I know I'm not going to want all this white on the other page either. So I'm going to go ahead and tear it off. And we're good with it. Now what do I think about it now? Let's 
same thing as the beginning. I got to play with it before I know how I like it. And I like it like that. That's cool. I can see the music. I can see these beginning of this encyclopedia or dictionary page. I can see some handwriting sticking out. I don't know that I want this in here. I, I just don't know yet. I don't know that I'm a paper doily kind of girl in the center. I don't I don't know that. I might be paper doily there, but I need something better for right there. Yours is a pudge. <laughs> Do you or will you have writing areas? I will have writing areas on the coffee dyed pages or in the margins of other pages, something like that. There's always enough writing space in my journals. I make sure of it one way or another, whether I have to add extra ephemera or something like that. But there definitely is writing space. Even now when we flip through, I'm almost to the point where we can flip through the signature. You'll see that there's quite a bit. Um, I just need to find something that I'm happy with here for the center. <laughs> okay, so you guys know I have lots of things and you guys also have lots of things because you've got a lot of them from me. So I know we all have things we could use. There are additional pieces in the kit and some of those thoughts were to put one of those bags because um, there's several bags, right? You have this blank sheet of onion skin you can use in a way. We have all of these bags. So this guy, like, you really wouldn't want to fold him and put him in the signature. You could, but he's just going to be a tiny, tiny pocket because he's very small. But you have these bags, and you can fold one of them and put them in the signature, which we probably will do with that glassine one. You also have this craft envelope, and I gave him to you to either use as some kind of pocket or um, you can paper clip it over a page or you can put it in the signature. So those are additions to signatures. We also have this floppy time card. I'm not sure if I'm using him or not, but he folds, he's a trifold um, card. So you fold him here and you fold him here and you can also put him in the signature if you wanted to. I'm not sure what we're doing with him yet. And then we have a French postcard. Could be a pocket somewhere, maybe. Not sure yet. Other than these things, I don't think there's anything else I want to add to the signature other than maybe that spot. Let me flip through and see how thick this guy is. What he looks like in there. And you can see we have some overhang just barely here on the edge. And that's because as you assemble your signature, your pages stick out further and further and further as you get to the center part of your signature. Because when you fold them, it creates bunch, they all get bunched up here and they push the inside pages, the center pages, it pushes them out. So as you build your signature out, these pages here stick out just a little bit and honestly that's the french ledger page and it probably is just slightly too big i will refold him and get him to go in and then i think we're going to be good so that was the first thing we needed to check for the second thing is i want to add these fun things in here so i'm taking him out because he's just sticking out a little tiny bit and he's kind of thin I don't know that we would glue something on him. I'm just going to refold him and do a flip. So I'm going to fold him in a little bit on this side. Hopefully folding him straighter than that. And I'm going to fold him in right here. And it just brings him in so he doesn't stick out and gives us a little flip out for later to play with. So he needs to go back in his spot. And we have flip out here, so I can't have flip out here. So he needs to be turned around. 
and he's just a ledger page so he can go any direction we want him to go in so we've got it like that now i'm just squishing it back in squishing it back together and you can see he doesn't stick out there anymore it's basically just aligned with the kit pages and then when we put him in the signature nothing sticks out here anymore so we're good there and now let's find a place and put these in there they're going to be fun later so let's do it on these coffee dyed pages that is a great place to to tuck something in right like this craft envelope would be cute there you could also use him as your center signature um, piece so what i mean by that is in the center where i was fighting to find something that i liked you could some people do some people like this so this is the center of my signature when i sew it into my journal my my signature strings are going to come out right here in the center some people like to sew an envelope in the signature right here in the center and then when those strings come out they like to seal the envelope on those strings and then it's just a, a turnable envelope i don't really like doing that because i like to put charms on my signature strings and we're going to wrap up here for tonight pretty pretty soon robin sorry you have to go <laughs> we're going to wrap up pretty soon our normal time is three hours on friday so we're getting there let me go up and see Envelope in the middle. Oh, Deborah, you're you're you just thinking exactly like me. So you could do that. You don't have to seal your strings in there, right? But some people do. Some people like to seal the strings in there with this part, and then they slice open this part and make that a little pocket. And that honestly might be kind of fun right there to have that become a pocket there, whether I sealed in the strings or not. But that might be kind of fun. I have to see how I think about the, how I feel about that one. We're going to leave him there for the moment. And I need to find a place to put this glassine bag. And I'm going to put him in, just fold it in half. Find the opening, put the opening however you want it. And I'm going to fold him in half. And I'm going to put it in that signature somewhere. So where could we use a little interest? I mean, right here could use a little interest. Keep in mind, we're going to have pockets and tags and things stuck everywhere. So just find a spot that you think you would want your bag if you're putting a bag in here. And you have several of them. So I could put it here. And there's what that would look like. And I kind of like this playing off of this lighter color of uh, wallpaper there or I could put it here just because there's not a lot going on but honestly I'm probably putting pockets somewhere here so just wherever you think right it doesn't ultimately matter I'm going to put it up here in the front I just kind of liked it there. I'm going to put it right there. So I think that's my signature. And I think I am going to put this envelope in there. And I'm going to leave it to where I can see it. I think that looks nice. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's how I'm going to sew in this signature. And I'm going to stop right here and I'm not going to sew it in tonight. And we will begin next Friday with sewing in the signature for those who haven't done that before. Um, so next time we come, I'm going to sew this signature into the cover. And then we will start working on pockets and tags. Um, I already have some things made, and I made those with you guys. So let me show them you those quick, and then we will wrap up. Good night, Robin. Okay, things that we already made together, 
um, on this channel. First of all, I embossed some neutral colors of um, that handmade paper that you can get on Amazon. I had a whole bunch of neutral colors of it and I embossed some of that and that is more for decorating um, than anything else. But I prepped that. So you might wanna have some of that handy. Um, this bag that we made together on camera, we made this, I don't know, one or two Fridays ago. This is the bag that I'm going to tuck all the goodies that I send along with the journal in. Um, I usually send along a little packet of playful, like paper that they can play with, things that they can play with and use in the journal. So I'm gonna save this bag, it's neutral colors, and I'm gonna fill that full of stuff that I send with this journal when this journal goes to its new home. The other things I have, this is kind of your supply list if you want these. If you don't want these, then fine. Then you don't have to have them. Nobody's, you know, twisting your arm with it. These are other things from Ruby and Pearl that are printed um, that I may or may not use. She has neutral tags. And I know that for a fact we're going to use some of those. So you can go to her site. It's Ruby and Pearl XO if you're not familiar with it on Etsy and she has a lovely site of digitals so i have those printed here is some more of her neutral tags you can see that that stuff is just perfect for the kit we made some of these together we made these um, journal cards covered in piano paper and they were just our bases and then we were going to add stuff and embellish them i still have those so we're going to make those the rest of the way but Again, you might want to prep things. I have an assortment of antique ledger pages and things like that that I'm going to use. I have some coffee dyed music paper, the French music paper. I have all of my other digitals that are coffee dyed. Not really a big deal, but um, we made these neutral things together. We made a bunch of neutral tag bases, and I went ahead and sewed around all of those so those are ready. We made these vellum antique um, indenture vellum tag things those are ready i put these little um, scraps on them as little charms i don't know if i'm leaving those little charms on there or not but i'm definitely using some of that in the journal we made these ribbon crimp things so between now and next friday if you want to make any of this these videos are on my channel these were made with ribbon crimps and stamped fabric and they all have little charms on them they're really really cute so you know not all of this is going in the journal obviously because i'm not having five of the same thing but those are things that we made so far in the neutral color palette because we've been planning i've been planning this journal for a while this is so cool cool <laughs> i'm glad you're liking it and then we made this is all bits and pieces that were saved to use in the journal um, little antique documents and ephemera and things then we made these um, antique page pocket things we made these on camera um, together this one still needs sewn around right there and we made this lacy one so if you want to re-watch some videos and kind of make some of this they're out there and this was all in the in the last week or so. We made these pockets together. These are little um, envelope pockets. I have like that, okay, like that. This guy with texture paste. We folded a doily, folded some envelopes. We made these tags. These three tags we made, and we made this one at some point. And we made some more bases in neutral colors, more bases in neutral colors, bases in neutral colors. We made these guys with embossed paper on them, and they're just bases, right? Will we you need all of this for one journal or use all of this in the same journal? Probably not, but they're there if we want to. And that's basically where I'm at with prepped things. So when we come back, I'm just going to leave all of that out there when we come back awesome scrapbook sage that's nadine no i don't know <laughs> awesome guys awesome i'm gonna flip the camera back say my good nights and um 
yeah, that's where we're going next week. So next Friday, 7 p.m. right here, same time, same place. And we'll sew in the signature and start making some pockets and things like that. We probably won't get to tags. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to try to do some prepping in between things so that um, when we are here together, I can make the most of that time. And yeah, hopefully you guys had fun. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully some of you actually made the cover with me. And then you'll have the journal to work on every Friday with me. Should be fun. Good night. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> awesome. You don't have to rewatch. It's not a ploy to try to get you to rewatch them. I'm just saying when you see me use those things to decorate or to fill pockets with, that's where they came from, that we did actually make them together. Awesome, Judy. Awesome. Awesome. I know that there is Jackie um, in Puerto Rico who has a kit. There are many people who have a kit. There's like 25 of you that have a kit. So whether you're making the kit now with me or not, I don't know. But I don't know that the kit got to Jackie in Puerto Rico or not yet. It should have based on priority mail, but we'll see. Um, but if you didn't get your kit yet, you have tracking in your email. If you can't find tracking and you don't have a kit, I think there's one or two that may or may not have been delivered. If you don't have tracking and you don't have a kit, message me and I will track it for you. Everyone else should have gotten their kit. The one girl purchased it just a few days ago, but other than that, everyone should have. Okay, good night guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on Tuesday for a sale. Many, many of you will be shipped in the next week. I am going to be changing shipping and we will talk more about that on Tuesday, but yeah, if you get if you get shipping invoice or notice that your package has shipped and you weren't expecting it, it's because I'm needing to ship you. So <laughs> I will talk more about that on Tuesday. Glue smudges on your laptop keys. Uh oh, Becca. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yay, Toby. What are we yaying Toby for? I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't read it yet. Where is it? Where is it? I don't see Toby's comment. Well, yay, Toby. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not coming through to StreamYard. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. My eyes are getting super watery. I will let you guys go. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. And thanks, Vanessa. And thanks, Casey, for coming tonight. That was awesome. Bye, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>